Hi everyone, welcome to the Basic Science Series by Dr. Lukinder Kumar. I have created this program to promote scientific knowledge among students and young researchers. This episode is dedicated to the types of beta lactamases including TEM, SHV, CTXM, OXA and ESBL which is Extended Spectrum Beta Lactamases. In the previous episode, we have already discussed the basics of beta lactamases. Now in this episode, we will know more about their types. And by the end of the episode, you will have all the basic information about the evolution of beta lactamases. Before explaining about the types of enzymes, let me tell you about the basics of proteins. DNA molecules have information in the form of triplet codons. And each codon gives the information of a particular amino acid and a stretch of DNA that encodes a particular stretch of amino acid or a functional protein is called the gene for that particular protein. And for beta lactamases, there are five major types of genes that are responsible for the synthesis of these enzymes. These are TEM, SHV, CTX, MOXA, and ESBL. Although they are different, but they are originated from a common ancestor beta lactamase gene. All right, let's discuss all of these five major genes one by one. The term TEM came from the name of an Athenian patient, Timonira, from which the isolate was recovered in 1963. TEM1 is the most common encountered beta lactamases in gram-negative bacteria. Up to 90% of the ampicillin resistance in E. coli is due to the production of TEM1. SHV1 shares 68% of its amino acid with TEM1 and has a similar overall structure. The SHV1 beta lactamase is most commonly found in Klebsiella pneumoniae and is responsible for 20% of the plasmid mediated ampicillin resistance. CTXM beta lactamases. These enzymes are not very closely related to TEM or SHV beta lactamases in that they show approximately 40% identity with these two commonly isolated beta lactamases. More than 80 CTXM enzymes are currently known. They have mainly been found in strains of Salmonella enterica serova typhimurium and E. coli. There are subvariants in this group and CTXM14, CTXM3 and CTXM2 are the most widespread. OXA beta lactamases were long recognized as a less common but also plasmid mediated beta lactamases variety that could hydrolyze oxacillin and related antistaphylococcal penicillins. These beta lactamases differ from the TEM and SHV enzymes in that they belong to molecular class D. These have been found in E. coli, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and other Enterobacteriaceae. The OXA type have been found mainly in Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Commonly expressed plasmid encoded beta lactamases that we have discussed previously confer resistance only to penicillin, not to other related antibiotics. But in the mid 1980s, a new group of enzymes, the extended spectrum beta lactamases known as ESBLs, were detected ESBLs are the beta lactamases that hydrolyze extended spectrum cephalosporins including cefotaxim, ceftriaxon and ceftazidem. Thus ESBLs confirm multi-resistant to these antibiotic and related oxyamino beta lactams. In typical circumstances they derive their genes from TEM and SHV by mutation and that altered the amino acid configuration around the active site of these beta lactamases. I have already mentioned this point in previous episode of antibiotic resistance. Estimate says that 700,000 to several million deaths results per year due to the antibiotic resistance, mainly due to the action of these enzymes making antibiotic therapy ineffective. New and new variants of these enzymes are evolving due to the random mutations. More we misuse antibiotics, more enzyme will be produced, making our antibiotic therapy ineffective. Let me tell you about a concerning point that bacteria is now found to be resistant to even the last resorts of antibiotics. This means that if you get infected with that particular bacteria, there will be no treatment option available for you. 
positive news is that we can slow down the process of evolution of antibiotic resistance by avoiding the misuse of antibiotics. I'm going to again stress on the points that how we can stop the spread of antibiotic resistance. Do not use antibiotics to treat viral infections such as influenza, the common cold, a runny nose or a sore throat. Ask your doctor for other ways to feel better. Use antibiotics only when a doctor prescribes them. When you are prescribed antibiotics, take the full prescription even if you are feeling better. Ensure that the members of your family do the same. Never share your antibiotics with others or use leftover prescriptions. Always consult your doctor. The antibiotics are precious and the cost associated with the production have made these important drugs available to everyone. So just because they are available, we should not consider abusing these wonderful drugs. Please make people aware regarding the misuse of antibiotics and use antibiotics only when the doctor prescribes them. I hope you liked the video. Please share the video with students and young researchers. Please subscribe my YouTube channel for new presentations. Thank you and Namaste.